Okay, so I've wanted to do this video for a little bit, give a bit of a channel update because a lot's happened the last couple of days actually, like not just in general me, but like also do YouTube and the grand kind of slate of things. Apologies if there's a bit of an echo, I'm, I'm trying to like rearrange my room right now to actually like record stuff because like I got the new PC, the thing is fucking massive. Um, if I have time before this video gives up because I'm recording it the same night as it goes up, I'll, uh, I'll put a picture of it in the, uh, in the video, but it's, it's a hulking, it, it's more like a microwave than a PC. It's, it's gigantic. Like, this thing is massive. This looks like a PC from the 80s, but, um, no, there's been a lot of stuff going on lately, and I, I have to talk about both in, like, my personal life and also in, uh, YouTube. Grand Slave YouTube. So for starters, the first thing I want to talk about is the SS Sniper Wolf drama. Kind of address it really fast because it highlighted a lot of issues I have with YouTube and have had for a few months now. The basic issue of YouTube's favoritism and YouTube treating certain creators better than others. Not even just about numbers, just in terms of just weirdly favoring some people over other people. Like the fact that game theory gets constantly negative like to dislike ratio and yet they're videos are always on the front page of YouTube, or how SS Sniper Wolf doxed a guy and all she got for it was 30 days without monetization. Which granted, would hurt at her level, but still, not really enough of a punishment for somebody who literally doxed somebody, has falsified her whole career, and has some black accusations against her. I'll, I'll probably censor what I just said there, because it's a, a term I don't want to say that early in the video. Let's just say it starts with P and ends with file. Yeah, there's a lot of really bad stuff that's happened with the whole YouTube situation. Now we have stuff to do with Gerard the Completionist, which I kind of saw coming. He's done some sketchy shit over the years. There was that, what was it? There was like one video he did where he kept like being really creepy and stalkery towards like a girl in like, like some actress, I forget what her name is, but he was like acting really like kind of rapey and stalkery towards her. And then there was uh, the instance of the way they handled the JonTron stuff with Normal Boots, how he just gave kind of like a right-wing opinion and then they kicked him off of Normal Boots, like, I get that it may not agree with your political beliefs, but you can't just ban a guy from a company he made, you know, over his opinions, like, it, it may not be something you agree with, but at the end of the day, it's still his right to have an opinion, it's called free speech. So, yeah, there was a lot of stuff they did, and then there was the way that, like, the pro Jared stuff was handled, because he was also part of the whole Normal Boots thing, and... Yeah, the, a lot of the normal boots guy, with the exception of JonTron, I don't think any of them are really clean. Now that I think about, it. I can't remember if Peanut Butter Gamer is part of them. If if he is, he definitely is still like good lad. I haven't watched him in years, but like I've never heard anything bad about him. So the other thing I want to discuss is how things been going with my recording schedule and my health. So. In the Google Translate video, I talked about the video got delayed. Not once, not twice, but three times because I was too sick. Um, so I want to talk about that real fast. I got COVID. I basically, so my mother got it first and she was like, holy shit, I feel like shit. She's like, I'm coughing, everything. I started with like a headache and all that stuff. And I, I kind of leered at her. I'm like, maybe you should take like a COVID test. And she was like, nah, it's just a cold, you know, it, it is the season, it's, you know, late October, early November, so she just brushed it off. Then I got it, and I was broken by this thing. I could not get out of bed, I could not get any work done, I could not sleep, I, like, I would wake up every morning, I'm still doing it to some extent, waking up in these massive coughing fits, just super, super ill, like, not not feeling well at all. Um, you, I don't know if my voice is better. It, I, you could definitely hear I had some voice crust in the uh, the Google Translate video. Like I, I sounded like my voice was frying a lot and I was a little stuffy and uh, I'm sorry, like if people didn't like hearing that, I apologize. I had to get the video out. I was uh, hitting the deadline. I was like, oh shit, I'm not gonna get this out in time. So I put it out. Um, it got no views because uh, another thing we're gonna talk about in a minute with YouTube that's going on. And yeah, if anyone's watching this that hasn't watched it, please go support that video because I put like 44 hours of work into it and it got no views because YouTube hates me right now. I guess this is a good time to talk about the YouTube situation. So for anyone who doesn't know, YouTube changed their ads policy. And on YouTube now, then instead of going from one ad to the other, like it used to because YouTube it used to go from 
um, one add to the error. By the way, I'm sorry if I'm like slurring my words a bit or something, I, or like stuttering a lot. So part of the thing with COVID is I've actually lost a majority of my hearing in my right ear. I think I've lost like 80% of my hearing, and now while I hear it, ee! so yeah, I'm a, probably a bit stuttery and I'm probably like slurring my words a bit, but I'm partially deaf right now. I'm hoping it goes away and I'm not like this forever. But anyway, back to the whole YouTube ads thing. I just wanted to bring that up real fast because I might be stuttering a lot. So YouTube has changed their ad policy. Everything is like a, an ad chain now where it goes from one ad to the next, to the next, to the next. And unless they're skippable, you're stuck watching them. Unless, of course, you pay for YouTube Premium. Nobody's gonna buy YouTube Premium. Stop trying to push it on us. First, you did the whole thing with like YouTube fucking, what was it? Like YouTube Red or something? I can't remember what it was. Or he tried to push all this original content on us by having all these creators like get paid massive amounts of money and like nobody cared and nobody bought the subscription so it died. Then you tried to do other stuff like you tried to give them perks and you tried to give them free movies. Still no one gave a shit. And now YouTube's like, oh well, we'll just force ads down your throat until you buy YouTube Premium. YouTube, no one's going to do that. You know what they're gonna do? They're going to go to another service and they're going to leave YouTube behind. I mean, God, you already treat your creators like dog shit, so I mean, I can't imagine people sticking around too long. I mean, hell, I'm thinking of jumping shit for Twitch or Kick, because, I mean, YouTube clearly hates me in the algorithm. So, that let's get into that whole fucking debacle, because this is a mess. So, YouTube, because I was not informed, they were supposed to inform all content creators on their dashboard about this ad thing. They did not inform me. I had my ad blocker still on because I was sick of seeing hentai on my YouTube front page and ads. I decided, okay, I'm getting an ad blocker, screw this, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of looking at fucking ahigao faces on my YouTube front page. I'm gonna get YouTube ad blocker, I'm gonna like, get rid of this nonsense. Well, then they changed the system, did not inform me. So now I've been buried in the algorithm because YouTube is just so fucking insane with this new ad system and like oh my god this whole thing is a mess and now all they're doing is pushing people to use ad blockers who weren't even aware of ad blockers before because they're trying to figure out how to get away from the shit i mean i don't see this lasting to the end of november honestly i don't this new system is gonna kill the fucking platform they have to do something about it. it's just so bad i mean this is like such a mess it's so nightmarish it's unbelievable I can't even begin to comprehend what went through their mind in their tiny little executive boardroom brains to think this was a good idea. It's not. People are just going to stop using the platform. We've seen this with other platforms. They just walk away. And then that leaves everyone else behind, including the people who are trying to grow on the platform like me. Like, it's so infuriating to watch YouTube kill itself like this. It's like... It's like you're watching a dog jump into a pool and this dog is lame in two legs and it knows it's gonna drown because it has basic survival instincts and it jumps in anyway. You try to save it, but it's a limp dog so it just drowns in the fucking pool. And that's YouTube right now. And that's an insane example, but that's like literally the first thing that comes to mind when I think of YouTube in this moment is like a drowning puppy. This is how bad this shit is. And now they've got like two major platforms, one of which is an OG, like doing a bunch of shit. I guess I should talk more about the Gerard the Completionist stuff because I kind of glossed over it. Um, basically he's been stealing from charity as far as anyone can tell for the last like god knows how many years. He has a charity organization, I think it's called like the Open Hand or Open Palm or whatever the fuck it's called. And it's supposed to be an organization to help people with Alzheimer's and dementia. Fucking noble cause, right? Except he hasn't been donating to the places he's supposed to be donating to. The place he's publicly announcing he's been donating to. He has just been keeping it to himself. Nobody can figure out if he's spending it or just like hoarding the money, but he's been doing it. And it's so goddamn shady. It's like actually gross. It's disgusting. It's like one of the worst things I've ever seen. Like, whole, withholding charity money from people with dementia and Alzheimer's is like the most evil thing a human being can do. And I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, well, maybe he's just like incompetent. Somebody within the company has been stealing money. But even that's bad. It's not good. 
you, you can't just like not donate money to people you said you were donating it to like the whole thing is just weird and disgusting and like he's been radio silent so far he hasn't said a damn thing and maybe that's just like a legal thing maybe as a legal team saying like don't discuss this under any circumstances like the pro jared stuff that was a thing too because like that's why he was silent for so long and by the way like people i heard this weird argument now that like people are defending pro jared don't defend pro jared the dude still fucked his best friend's wife and cheated on his own wife. The dude is a dick. I'm so tired of people defending Pro Jared lately. I've heard it constantly. It's like, no, stop defending him. And then, like, there's other stuff that's been going on on the platform. There's so many stupid little things that are just, like, killing YouTube very, very quickly. I don't know. It, the platform's in a dangerous, dangerous spot. I mean, and... and one last thing I want to talk about, and I might do uh, a full, like, documentary on it, too, because I feel so goddamn vindicated. Payday 3 is dead. Payday 3 has died. It has gone to join the Choir Invisible. This is an ex-heist game. It's expired and gone to see its maker. Monty Python memes aside, this game went from being the most hyped game on the internet, a game we had been hearing about for six years, a game that was massive, a game that was like so unbelievably hyped both within the payday community, general steam culture, and like FPS games. Because right now we are in a barren wasteland of FPS games. The new COD is god awful. You have freaking X Defiant, which has been pushed and delayed to god knows when i know there's been leaks saying it's gonna it's gonna basically surprise drop in february i hope so i don't see it happening what people don't understand about this x defiant situation i'm actually very aware of it now because as i've started doing game development i understand game engines more these issues that they're having with x defiant are inherently game engine issues Things like the movement not working properly, things like the footstep noises not working properly. There are many, many, many problems they are having that are built into the engine. And as somebody who is now working in game development, I can tell you how bad things are when they're built into the engine and they are not working properly. It is a nightmare. And I mean, I'm sure they have much more power behind them than one guy making a Fire Emblem-like game. But... It's still really difficult to work around when you have an engine problem and not just a, oh, well, this issue is here. Let me just turn a dial up because there are things like we joke about that 90s commercial where they like they sold video game colleges as like this thing of like, oh, it's that easy. Like, but there are genuinely things that are just dials that you turn or like things that you just input a different number into. Engines do have some small things like that. But what we have here is we have issues with the audio issues with the movement issues with the recoil issues with the camera issues with uh textures not loading the x defiant problems are not something that can be fixed easily they are very real very difficult problems that the devs are going to face and as for payday 3 the devs had released a game that is broken inherently the challenge system makes no sense the idea that you have to do specific things in game that may alienate your play style as a player. Like, oh, you want, you use shotguns, but I want to use the sniper rifle. Use shotguns or else. Seems to be their fucking idea. And then you have things like the armor system being horribly unbalanced. The health system being horribly unbalanced and like completely against the player. Uh, cash values in game just not being worth a damn thing. You have things like the fact that there's no guns or masks. There's literally no content in that game. And I know people are making this argument like, well, you have all the stuff you have in Payday 2 after a decade. But it's like, yes, but when a new game comes out, you expect all the content, or at least a majority of the content from the previous game to be in the new game. When Call of Duty games release, they don't release with 10% of the guns from the previous game. They have more weapons or the same amount of weapons that are just different in the new game. Every game releases like this. And, like, to be the one game, and people are like, well, 10 years ago, it's not about the time. You're saying, by your logic, I have to wait to 2033 for Payday 3 to be a good game. 
I, I am so tired of videos like this. I keep seeing these Payday 3 fanboys like, oh, we just have to wait 10 years, guys. No, we don't have to wait 10 years. It's Payday 3. It was in development for six years. Baldur's Gate 3 and Elden Ring were in development for six years. Mario Bros. Wonder was in development for six years. These are finished games. <laughs> They have new content, they have functional systems, they don't glitch, they don't have broken... Like, there are perks in Payday 3 that literally have no purpose. Like, they are for weapons that do not exist in-game. There's like two perks in that game that are based around explosives, and the only explosive in the entire game is the grenade and the fucking ultimate weapon, which is the piglet. Like, they did not put any thought into this release, it's almost like they just were like, well... You know, we could just delay it to 2024, put in all the guns. Because you gotta remember, I know there are people saying, well, oh, they'd have to implant all the guns from, from Payday 2. It's not difficult to transfer a model from one game to the next. Even if it's in a new engine, you have all the images. They're image files. They're not, it's not like every single skin has to be coded. You just take it. You import it into Unreal, and then you update the skin into the new engine's graphics. That's all you do. It's not hard. And this is a problem that you have with Payday, because this has always been a problem with Payday. Overkill is incompetent, and God love them, they try, they really do, but they're incompetent, and Starbreeze is greedy. And that is the problem with Payday, and it has been the problem with Payday for a decade. It's why Payday 2 has had issues like the fact that we just don't have burst weapons, they don't really exist. Because instead of just learning how to code them into the game, the devs are like, nope, not doable. Really, it's not doable, then why is the entire Steam Workshop filled with people who have made modded Payday 3 burst weapons, and GitHub, and like, Game Banana, and a bunch of other modding sites have this feature? It's clearly not a problem. And see, the other smart thing to do would have been just to hire third-party modders, like people who have modded Payday 2 heavily to work on Payday 3. But no, they didn't. You know what they did instead? They wasted all of their money. They didn't. This is what they did. They did the classic Call of Duty trick. Instead of putting all the money into the game, they put the money into marketing and only marketing. You did not need marketing. This is one of the most hyped games of all time. This was a game we waited a fucking over half a decade for. Over half a decade. We waited for six years and we got Payday 3. When we could have gone a fantastic i mean first of all they made such a big deal in the marketing like these maps are huge these maps are like have infinite replay value the first map in the game the bank heist map the one that i played for the video that i did after the one where i talked about what a dumpster fire mess payday 3 is yeah guess what that map is smaller than default maze bank from payday 2. it is smaller than that map when you break down the actual playable area of what you need to do, it is a teeny tiny little map. And yet they marketed this game as having maps that were like fucking gigantic. I mean, this, the whole point of this game was that these maps were huge. Literally, that was something they prided themselves on. They talked about relentlessly in the marketing that these maps were going to have infinite replay value. And that's why there was only eight of them at launch. And yet I played one. I played pretty much the only way that you were going to play it because stealth is nearly impossible in this game with the way the perk system is and the fucking level up system is. This game is a mess. Payday 3 is a mess. It needs to be fixed. It needs to be completely overhauled. I mean, I, I know they said they plan the Unreal 5 overhaul for next year. They need to push it to December. They need to get it out as soon as possible, even if they just shut down the game for a month. Because, I mean, not like anyone's playing it anyway. They lost 91% of the player base now. Oh, God, what a fucking mess. Payday 3 is just a disaster. Everything, and I wanted it to be good. Like, I was one of the people who went into it. I saw the writing on the wall from the start. Like, go back to my Plants vs. Zombies Let's Play. I talked about it at least twice where I said there's something off with this game. And when it released, I was right, and I didn't want to be. I was, I was, like, completely upset that I was right. Because I was like, I want this game to get. I waited six years for this game. I loved Payday 2. Payday 2, honestly, probably in my top five, if not top three games of all time. I adore Payday 2. I both, not, even the console version, which is a little janky, it has its charms. It really does. Like, having an earlier version of the game, in some ways, is kind of nice. I even talked about this with uh, Seven Days on console. 
There are nice things about having an older version that runs differently than the PC version. It's weird, but it is kind of enjoyable to have a unique version of the game that is just inherently different and runs by a different set of rules. I just, I don't know. It's It's been a disaster. This whole thing has been a disaster. Payday 3 is in an absolute mess of a state. And I don't know if it's salvageable. I really don't. I think they've lost so much goodwill at this point. And now there's leaks and stuff saying that they're going to update Payday 2 and, and basically just drop Payday 3 and give it minimal content because they know no one's playing and no one will buy the DLC. I mean... Payday 2 literally has 10 times the amount of players Payday 3 does, and Payday 3 came out barely two months ago. Actually, not even two months ago, time of recording this. In, uh, two days from now, it'll be two months ago. <laughs> they need to do something. They need to address this with the community. They need to say, we'll get rid of the online only. We'll get rid of the challenge system. We will rework the armor and health system to be far more forgiving and far more friendly to actual gameplay. Because it feels like it was untested. You know, we will add like 50 guns for free. We will add like 50 masks for free. We will add a bunch of new throwables. And that's what they need to do. It's awful. The whole situation is awful. Honestly, I'm amazed they haven't received a class action lawsuit yet. Because sign me up. And... I'm just done. I'm not putting any more Payday 3 content up. I, I debated it to some extent. I might do a documentary documenting the fall of that game because it is the worst case in gaming history. I genuinely could not name you another game that lost almost 100% of its players less than two months after its launch. That is catastrophic. That doesn't happen. Like, it, even Modern Warfare 3 right now has more players than that and it's missing maps for God's sake. <laughs> That, that's an air controversy I need to talk about. So, I will be playing Modern Warfare 3's campaign. I said I wouldn't, but I found out it's much shorter than what people were telling me. And I need to see this for myself because I'm being told this is not only the worst campaign in COD history, this is one of the worst campaigns in any game ever. This is apparently catastrophically stupid beyond any shadow of a doubt. It is apparently the worst release of the last... 25 years according to people there are games that were releasing on the playstation 1 that had less bugs and more content than this game and i need to see this for myself i need to experience this because i've been staying away i've been on the fence on where and i want to play it because if you watched me when i did uh modern warfare 2 2022 uh you would know that i played it it was eight hours i hated every goddamn second of it with a burning fiery passion every enemy had armor there was miles and miles of in-game land that had nothing no enemies no easter eggs nothing there was nothing to that game it was boring it was dull it was dead it sucked it was a terrible 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 game and the first game i ever ranked on this channel as a one out of ten in fact payday 3 is the next one amusingly enough going back to payday 3 and i haven't had it spoiled for me yet all i know actually there is one spoiler i know which is apparently there is a death in this game which i'll give them credit because that means it's better than modern warfare 2 was because that game sucked that game had no story progress whatsoever that game might as well not even exist in the timeline because nothing happened in it i hate it I'm probably going to hate Modern Warfare 3, but I'm going to play it anyway, because I apparently hate myself. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> apparently, I despise myself. I mean, shit, why do I keep making content for YouTube when I get no views, right? I make fun of myself. God knows no one else will. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really want to talk about. Oh, I have the, like I said, I have the new PC I have to get set up and everything. I, I know it works. I tested it. I did, like, some stress tests and some benchmarks and stuff. It, it seems to be working perfectly fine. Um, I had to return the Elgato that I had, get bought, like, um, bought with it because I, I plugged it in and it immediately would not even remotely detect the Elgato software um, and at first I thought oh well maybe I have the wrong software and then I looked at it I'm like no I have the right software it just will not run so the Elgato I got was defective and I got the new one today I record some other stuff on PC tomorrow night probably like two things I might actually even do a Pokemon train card game live because I, I've been playing uh, the Pokemon TCG again lately online and oh man TCG live is rough I'm gonna talk about it briefly cuz you want to talk about unfinished games? Let me tell you about unfinished games. So, Pokemon the Train Card Game Live. 
is the new version of PTCGO. For anyone who doesn't know, that's Pokemon Train Card Game Online. Um, this was a game that had been out since approximately, I want to say it was 2011, might have been 2010. And basically what this game was, was it was the train card game, but online, as the title suggests. But... When it first released, it was kind of buggy, some things didn't work, there was some problems, and ever since it's been growing. It's been growing a lot, and it's it was really fun. They actually really capped it out. At one point, it, it ran like a dream. It stopped running really poorly. Um, we had a ton of cards to work with and Expanded, because for anyone who doesn't know, Expanded in Pokemon is a format that basically consists of cards from 2011 onward. And needless to say, it was pretty much everyone's favorite mode because just between the nostalgia of having a lot of these older cards from the last decade and between like, it, there was a lot of really good things about it. And then there's things that were in TCGO that are just completely missing from live, weirdly enough. Like for example, we don't have cards from the black and white and X and Y era to give you an understanding. This is approximately four years worth of cards we're missing. And without it, there's a lot of decks that run really badly. For example, um, things like black, gray, and blue decks, for anyone who doesn't know, instead to cough, hopefully that doesn't corrupt the audio. I mean, I'm still getting over the COVID. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know what black, gray, and blue refer to, and a lot of other color-based decks, these are actually just types. So when people say black in the expanded uh, TCG community, what they refer to is dark type. Because Dark Type has a lot of sport cards. Like Dark Type has uh, Dark Patch and Bow Compressor, and uh, Dark Ray X from uh, Dark Explorers. There's a lot of like really unique cards in there that are like very specific, and a lot of them are generic cards too. Like things like Bow Compressor, you can splash Bow Compressor in almost any deck and make it run well. But currently, we're missing a lot of those cards. We're missing um, a lot of decks completely. Night March is missing. Uh, water doesn't have a lot of the tools it needs. Like, again, there was, uh, I don't remember what set it was from, but the Manaphy EX that had the, uh, Dark Ray EX effect. Which is that, um, the Dark Ray EX effect was if you have Dark Energy on your Pokemon, they retreat for free. Uh, the Manaphy version was Water type Energy. And we're missing a lot of those cards, a lot of those staples, and it's making it run really jank in Expanded. Like, Expanded is missing a lot of things that it just needs. Um, cards like Blacksmith are missing uh, for red decks, you've got things like Eel is missing for yellow decks, you've got like, like I said, the Battle Compressor problem, and it's making it play like shit. I mean, it's, and I, I get it, I'm not even blaming the devs on this because unlike Payday 3 where they were really, really, like, they had all the time in the world, this was a game that was being rushed out by Pokemon Company and the studio that made it, I forget their name, they, they're like not directly Pokemon Company as far as I'm aware, they're like a third party that they, uh, basically like the COD Mobile thing where Activision went to Teamy and said like, we need you to make our game for us. And I'm pretty sure uh, PTCG Live has the same thing where it's, it's got like a whole separate studio working on it. And they were given basically no resources and no time, so the fact that we have even a remotely functional game is very, very impressive. I like it, I do. There's a lot of things about that suck, like the avatars are so bad. I thought the PTCGO avatars were god awful. Awful. I thought they looked so cringy. They looked like, you know what they look like? They look like avatars from like Toll Drama Island or one of those like kind of like mid 2000s Cartoon Network shows. That's what they look like. These ones are even worse. These ones look like Toy Story 1 style 3D animation where everything's in the uncanny valley and no one moves quite right or looks quite right. Um, there, there's a character in there, like a character model type that strip looks like iDubs, hilariously enough. There's a lot of things that just suck about it, but there's also a lot of really nice things about it. There's no microtransactions, for example. The dev team made very, very sure they were like, we will never put microtransactions in this game. We have no interest. We want this to be entirely F2P. Um, the closest thing you can get to it are buying codes, which, I mean, they don't cost much if you go to something like, um... I don't know how face-to-face -face games is good anymore. Last time I used them, I uh, conveniently had my credit card hacked after that. No, I was able to cancel in time, so it's not like it was like a financial disaster, but it might have been a convenience. It might have been them. I don't know. Um, but the point is, that there's like websites you can buy from Troll and Toad, a lot of ones. I'm way out of the loop. I, I'm literally getting back into the game after like a five, six year hiatus. But basically, there's a lot of stuff you can, you can like go to to get codes for PTCGO. You can just buy packs. Um, 
I don't ever recommend buying packs. I, I always say this, if you're looking to get into a train card game, whether that be Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, there is two ways I recommend you do that. A, suck it up, buy a booster box. I know it's pricey, but trust me, that is where the good shit's at. You were guaranteed to pull probably your money's worth back in the case of something like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. I don't know if the Pokemon market's as bad as it was when I stopped playing, because there was, at the time I quit playing, Rayquaza GX cost about $1,000. And that was when I officially said, okay, I'm done. And I walked away. And I've only come back recently because I'm like, I really want to play. I really want to play Pokemon Train Card Game. I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with Pokemon the Train Card Game where it's like, I know I hate it. But then I think of all the times where I absolutely love that game. And then I just get dragged back into it like an abusive ex. Uh, <laughs> abusive EX, yes. Oh wait, there is one more thing I need to talk about. I need to talk about my recording schedule. I'm trying to stabilize it best I can. Like I said, there's gonna be a couple more things that go up on PC, and then I'm probably gonna record a bunch of Stardew, and then uh, Spider-Man I might finish. I'm kind of going back and forth on whether I want to bother, because Spider-Man gets me no views. It, all, it Even with YouTube blacklisting me right now, because I forgot to take off fucking adblock because they didn't warn me. Spider-Man's always done badly on my channel, but I love the games. This one, I'm not feeling it. Um, I love the movement. The movement's incredible. The movement's the best I've seen in any game ever. I mean, Honestly, I think we're going to look at Spider-Man 2 in a decade the way that speedrunners look at Mario 64. I really do. It, the movement is so incredibly fluent. I just wish the game was better written and that there weren't so many political themes. I So I haven't recorded any more after part 4, but I've been watching other Let's Players. Specifically, I've been going on my way to watch smaller channels because I don't want to support Again, YouTube favoritism. There, uh, you want to see another example of YouTube favoritism? Literally everyone except Jacksepticeye who's playing Spider-Man 2 is getting next to no views. He is the only one pulling in viewership. And I've seen way better Let's Plays than his. I mean, it's... I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying there are smaller channels that I've seen play this that are significantly better. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to play it or if I'm just going to jump straight into COD and then Elden Ring. I keep trying to talk and my neighbors keep slamming their car door outside. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it though. Um, I'm very tired. It's like almost midnight and uh, you know, I, it's it's been close to 40 minutes. I'm going to call it a video. I just had to talk about my recording schedule real fast. I'm trying to stabilize. I'm trying to get back to normal. I think I'll probably just end Spider-Man prematurely because I'm just not... I just don't see myself being able to navigate this political minefield that is Spider-Man 2, and I just, I don't know. I, I'm just, these never do well on my channel anyway, with the exception of Miles Morales, but that was just mostly because Across the Spider-Verse was just a smash hit. I put that out pretty much the same time the first trailer came out for that, and I got, like, across the whole series, I think, like, 700 views. Um, might be higher than that, actually. I haven't checked that video in a while, but uh, there was, like, one part of it that got, like, 200, 300 views for no reason. But, yeah, I'm calling it, and this this was supposed to be a, a quick, uh, channel update, and I went on for, like, 40 minutes on tangent. Most of that was about Payday 3 being a piece of shit, but, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna just end it now. I never know how to end these fucking videos, I swear.